We've all heard the biblical origins of Christmas, but societies have been celebrating light and birth in the darkest days of winter, centuries before Jesus walked the earth. In the Norse country, this winter celebration was known as Yule. Around December 21st, the winter solstice, fathers and sons dragged evergreens indoors as reminders of life and set logs on fire as a promise of good fortune. Ancient Rome had its own December festivals. One week before the winter solstice, Romans began celebrating Saturnalia, an orgy of food and drink in honor of Saturn, the god of agriculture. Some Romans, particularly soldiers and government officials, also worshipped Mithra, the sun god. It is believed that to this small but powerful sect, the birthday of Mithra, December 25th, was the holiest day of the year. By the first century AD, pagan traditions were being challenged as Christianity took hold throughout the empire. But Christ's birth date remained a mystery since the Bible doesn't mention exactly when he was born. Since pagan Rome already celebrated the birth of Mithra on December 25th, it is theorized the church adopted the date as the birth of the Christ child. In the fourth century, the church made it official, declaring December 25th as the feast day of the nativity. The church knew it could not outlaw the pagan traditions of Christmas, so it came to accept them. The evergreens traditionally brought indoors were decorated with apples, symbolizing the Garden of Eden. These apples would eventually become Christmas ornaments. The story of Santa Claus also begins in the fourth century with the death of Nicholas, a beloved Turkish bishop. The anniversary of his death became known as St. Nicholas Day. On December 6th, good children woke to gifts from the kindly saint. Bad children sulked away with nothing. In Holland, he was known as Sinterklaas. 1,500 years later in America, a seminary professor named Clement Clark Moore reimagined the legend of St. Nicholas. In 1822, Moore wrote a poem called The Night Before Christmas about a good-natured saint named Santa Claus who was pulled by a group of reindeer and came down the chimney on Christmas Eve. Like St. Nicholas, Santa Claus spread good cheer and gave gifts to children. Less clear was exactly what this Santa Claus looked like. Then in 1863, Thomas Nast, a cartoonist for Harper's Weekly, settled the matter once and for all with his version of the Christmas Saint. Nast's Santa was rotund and jolly, with a full white beard and a sack full of toys. An American icon was born. 